This is the first lecture in what I hope will become a vast series of lectures at graduate level in pure math and mathematical physics and some computer science lectures. And probably I will be busy doing these lectures over a period of one to two decades. So it's a vast undertaking and this lecture is the very first uh, besides the introductory lecture that I did just a while ago. But this is the first real lecture on uh, a real course. And what is the course? Well, it's in pure math and it's finite group theory at junior, junior, senior level, and the main author is Barnard, uh, let's see, I have the text here, just a minute, uh, if you can see that, it's uh, in the Teach Yourself series, called uh, Mathematical Groups, now if you want details, go, go to this website, and uh, you'll see various tabs at, at the top of the uh, main page of the website and click on the tab Degaris MPC, so Math Physics Computing and then uh, you'll see an alphabetical list of uh, course topics, I call a course a lecture set and uh, in alphabetical order go down till you find finite group theory and I think it's the first one in, in that uh, category, finite group theory and you'll get the details of the course, like the titles of each chapter in this textbook, uh, how you can get the textbook, and, and so forth. Although I think you'll find it fairly self-explanatory uh, just from these lectures. You, you may not even need the textbook. But it's very clear, that's why I've chosen it. And uh, now most of these lectures in the MPC series, Degaris MPC, are at graduate level. I'd say in total about 90% of the lectures are at graduate level. Uh, masters, first year, so M1, as I call it, M2, PhD1, first year, PhD level courses, and PhD2, so uh, four years at graduate level, and some, about 10%, uh, the minority, at uh, undergrad level, usually senior level. And the reason I've chosen to do some undergrad level is in topics that are absolutely fundamental and basic to math and physics. And so to get a really good basis, a solid basis, um, I'll start in some topics at undergrad level. So you get that basis and so you can perform, you can understand better uh, the, the graduate level material. All right. So uh, this, this lecture is lecture one. And the topic of the lecture is proof, the, the, the nature of proof in pure mathematics. You have know, various techniques, in other words. Uh, for example, uh, proof by contradiction, uh, the nature of if and only if type statements, or necessary and sufficient condition, and proving something false. Uh, you know, techniques of, of proof. So it's about proof. So fairly elementary if, uh, if you've done this kind of stuff. but. I'm trying to be uh, consistent and thorough and we'll just go up step by step. You, you may find this first lecture fairly easy, but uh, you know, towards the end of the book it, you know, it gets a bit harder. Okay, so uh, now since this is the very first lecture, perhaps I should say a little bit about the general format, uh, my, my style, my lecturing style if you like. What I tend to do is to, now the, these, these are like summaries, little uh, you know, one-liners that uh, act as a prompt to me. So I, I just look at it and say, oh, that's the next thing I have to talk about. Right? And then I'll, I'll fill up this and uh, as I finish with some topic, I'll, I'll rub it out and then write the next one and so on. So the content, if you like, of, of the lecture is, is, is these, these little summaries. And we'll give you an idea also uh, of what the lecture will be about. Okay? Uh, and sometimes a bit on the right. Uh, you know, if, if things get a little bit technical, or maybe some formulas or something that, that I'll need, I tend to put them on the right side of the board, and the middle is the working area, so to speak. Right? Uh, perhaps I should say a bit about finite group theory. Why? Why is it in the course? Uh, in the in this series, why is it uh, an essential part of um, math and physics? Well, if you're a pure mathematician, it, it almost goes without saying that uh, group theory is absolutely fundamental to pure mathematics. In fact, uh, continuous groups 
are one of the biggest branches of pure math. So to pure mathematicians, uh, you know, virtually no justification is needed to to <coughs> to uh, see why pure math um, finite group theory is an important part of pure math. Now, if you're a physicist, a math physicist, uh, may need a bit more justification. But uh, if you're curious, for example, about the nature of the world, you know, what, what are the finest ingredients that, that humanity knows about uh, in the world that we know, uh, so elementary particles, for example, why on earth are they classified or classifiable using the principles of group theory? I mean, don't you find that deeply mysterious? That, that there's, there's something in group theory um, called SU3. Uh, don't worry about it if you don't know what it is. But uh, special unitary groups, it's a kind of group uh, in three dimensions. And this particular kind of group gets used to classify the elementary particles. Uh, a, a bit like the way Mendeleev did with the, the atoms in his atomic table in, uh, when was that, 1860s, 1870s, something of that order. So uh, you may find that deeply mysterious. What on earth has group theory got to do with the basic constituents of matter? And that's a, that's a really deep question. Uh, you know, if, if you're a deist, uh, a deist is somebody who thinks that the universe has been designed, that the laws of physics have been constructed and designed, architected by some hyper-creature, if you like, then uh, I guess you could conclude that that hyper-creature, that deity, uh, is, was, a mathematician, right? Because so much of nature obeys these, you know, these kinds of uh, mathematical group theory laws. So uh, you know, group, group theory is fundamental to physics, uh, pops up all over the place. So. Uh, I consider it essential that you get a really good, thorough grounding in finite group theory. And later we'll move to uh, infinite uh, group theory, continuous group theory, uh, and at gradu graduate level uh, I'll have a lot of courses on uh, Lie group theory. So that's L-I-E. He was a, a Norwegian mathematician in the 1800s, famous uh, Lie groups. Lee algebras and so forth, uh, but that's you know, graduate level stuff. Okay, <clears throat> right. So uh, this lecture is about proof. Uh, what are you doing when you uh, you prove something? It, and uh, pure mathematics is, is all about proof. Yeah, it's absolutely fundamental. So, uh, what are you doing when you prove something in in pure math? Well, you're trying to show something is true. Uh, it, you, 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 you'll start off with various premises, you know, they're statements, mathematical type statements, that you find so obvious that uh, you just accept them as true. And then from these, and they're called axioms. So, given statements, starting, starting statements that you assume are so obvious that uh, you don't question them. You, you, you have to start somewhere in an argument, right? in, in a logical argument. And from these axioms, you then deduce, with, with logic, you then deduce conclusions. Now, a proof is, uh, the, the proof is from the axioms getting the, the conclusions. And every possible case has to be true has to be to be proven, otherwise it's not a proof. For example, um, here's, here's a... Where can find one here? Oh, so all prime numbers are odd, right? Well, it seems plausible, right? You can 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, and so on, da, 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 da. It, looks, it looks as though they're, they're all um, odd, right? But, uh, oh, we forgot the first one. Well, the first prime number is 2. Well, that's not odd. So, that hypothesis, that uh, conjecture, that maybe it's true, that uh, all primes are odd, is actually false, because we found one that, for which it's not true. That conjecture, that, that possibility, that idea, is not true. Okay? 
So uh, to prove something, you have to show that something is the case, that it, that it is true, for all cases. That's, that's important, for all cases. And if you can just find one instance, one example where it's not true, um, that instance, that example is called a counter example, then uh, your, your hypothesis, your conjecture, 